what's up guys we are back for an update on the turbo 70 with the pitster pro 190 motor to give you an update after lots of r&d messing around with different sizes on everything to let you know what works best so let's keep it simple and dive into it okay so if you don't know i'm still going to tell you go watch the other three videos so you know but my pitot tube on this current setup which it will change like i said this is all ugly um is right here coming out of the charge pipe and that goes to the vent for the float bowl or fuel bowl on the carb and this is the um again i'm not going to get into details but what that does is gives this motor the initial gulp of air it would normally be receiving for if it were NA because that turbo restricts a lot of airflow coming in. Anyway, we're going to jump up to some diagrams now. So this is the quick rundown on a pitot tube. Uh, pitot tube, real quick, the turbo comes into the charge pipe here. And this is the pitot tube here. So charge pipe, pitot tube. Now all this tube does is intercept incoming air from the turbo and increase velocity so you can get that pressurized air to something somewhere quicker than this initial big volume of pressurized air. So in this case I have mine hooked to my fuel bowl flow bowl vent. Some people will tee this off and run it to the fuel pressure regulator. On this motor with an eighth inch ID the top tube and an eighth inch hole coming into it I found that just running this to the float fuel bowl vent was the best running optimal um, way to do this now your fuel inlet is right here here's your fuel pressure regulator that's bringing you know pressurized fuel into the carburetor because once once the pressurized air comes into the car, if it's not pressurized somehow, um, it's going to push fuel out wherever it's not sealed or, or pressurized, okay? So the intake elbow here, going into the motor, I found that putting a reference on that somewhere, it doesn't have to come into the tube, just on the outside of the tube, and running that to the fuel pressure regulator, that was the best medium happy medium I could make for my fuel pressure regulator and fuel pump to not put too much fuel into my carb um, with this pressurizing it. So that's how I've got it set up. This is also going to be your reference for your blow off valve. Um, again, if you have not watched my other three video series on turbocharging the ATC70, please go watch those so you can understand this a little better, okay? And in between the charge tube and the carb, that's where your plenum is going to go. And to give you a visual on the top tube, let's say you've got your compressor housing here. And this is your charge tube. Your top tube, it's closer to the turbo, can be better. It gets air where it needs to go quicker. But it can be anywhere in this length. There's no specific measurement that works better than the other it's just going to be when you're tuning it it'll it'll affect things a little bit i go closer to the turbo but um i'm out of tube so we're going to say that this socket is a tube that has an eighth inch a one eighth inch inside diameter and so we're going to keep that tube your charge pipe here coming from the turbo we're going to cut that hole to fit the outside diameter of your tube. Okay, we're not gonna cut a hole anywhere else, just that one portion. Now the tube, I'm gonna seal off one side, so I only have an exit on the other side. Now once I've done that, I'll put that in here. And then I'm going to find dead center in this top tube according to the charge pipe so somewhere in there so I'll mark that and pull this back out 
I'll drill an eighth inch hole in that, right where I marked that center point. And then when I go to weld this back into the charge tube, I want that hole I just created aiming right back at the turbocharger. So pointed this way. All right. So then we'll take that tube in there, weld it all the way around so it's sealed. And then that's it. So then you've got a tube sticking out to put your hose around. And it's got a one inch inlet coming in there and a, or excuse me, an eighth inch inlet and an eighth inch outlet. Okay. So put that aside. So then your main tuning tools are going to be your hose sizes. Um, they affect things dramatically. I've used from smaller than 16th inch up to 3 8 inch playing with uh, volumes of air and you know the smaller the volume the quicker the velocity and etc it changes things dramatically so you can leave that top tube but then use your actual hose as a tuning tool your jetting I like to jet lean um, more on the top end and and then use a power jet to actually tune with so and then again you'll your hose sizing probably want to go get some of these so you can play with where you want to split your lines whichever whatever works best and with when you once you find what works the best as far as you know your tune you're getting it close it's finally working but it's not perfect once you're close um, if you cannot get it perfect, I can guarantee you it's going to be either your hose sizing or where you've teed off your hose, or it's going to be the fuel pressure and your fuel pump, um, either, you know, pumping too much in or not enough. Uh, and that will be how you'll dial that in perfectly. So another thing to show you is on the top tubes, you don't have to do it this way, that way I showed you. That would be this one right here where it comes in and straight out, very simple. You could have one that does a 90 and then 90's out or comes straight out. Um, this would need to be in the dead center of that charge pipe still. Here's one out as well where you could have just a straight piece of tubing coming in and then you cut it on an angle so it still catches that in the center of the charge pipe and goes out. You hook your hose to that and there you go. Okay, so also let's talk about plenums. So the plenum is the initial big gulp of air your motor needs before the turbo can catch up and and uh, make up for that difference and pressurize everything okay now this right here this is a cone from the inlet this is a tube and this is another cone this is the optimum plenum shape for the highest horsepower highest torque um, and coolest running motor now intercoolers do cool your charge temp but as far as the plenum goes, plenum goes, this is the optimum shape. This is for a Raptor. I use a three inch inlet that goes to a six inch tube that then dives down to a three inch outlet with another cone. And the throttle body is literally right next to that. Um, this goes for blow through systems as well. Now we are space limited on the ATCs the pit bikes, the groms, whatever you're turbocharging, whatever size engine. So this shape may not be possible and that's just fine. If you saw the giant plenum I had that was a gas tank, it's a big kind of oval cylinder and it worked amazing. So the other thing is you'll hear most people say three to five times the engine size is how big your plenum should be. So a 190 cc motor 
take that and times it by five and that's how many cubic centimeters your of volume of plenum size you would need okay so on the 190 I went to that 15 times the size um, of the motor plenum and like I said it woke up the bottom end I had not lost any mid-range and if anything picked up top end I it revved out farther um, I, I really think I picked up power everywhere there noticeably especially the bottom end so I'm actually dialing mine back to a 10 times size of the engine just because I'm again size constraint now mine's going to be part of the gas tank the front portion of the gas tank will be my plenum and the rear section will actually be for the gas um, and of course they'll be split yes and they will be welded good and pressure tested but that's that's plenums 101 for single cylinders they are not necessary you can run a turbocharged motor single cylinder motor without a plenum it will never make the power that a single cylinder with a plenum will make um, so take that for what it's worth and good luck again I got another video I just made on top tubes um, we've got fun projects coming up a Raptor a Rhino um, possibly a two-stroke motor just mounted to an engine mount that we're going to turbocharge and play with um, I don't know my lawnmower twin turbo the lawnmower <laughs> we'll do some other fun stuff here but um yeah guys thanks for watching let me know if you have more questions in the comments I'll answer them as quick as I can um, I know a lot of you just want to see the riding videos which I have and I'll get those uploaded soon I need to finish my bike now that I've done all the R&D I need to make it look really good now and get more uh, riding video hopefully with a drone that can follow me around um, should be fun down at the sand dunes in the snow to get some video for you but um, yeah guys subscribe like stay tuned and let me know what you want to see or learn about or know and what I can help you with.